Times indefinite, even forever. You're watching Revelation, understanding world events from the past to the present and into the future. My guest today is author and teacher Barry Smith. He's written several books, mainly focusing on the New World Order. However, as Barry has many years of study about eschatology, that is, understanding end time prophecies, he will no doubt talk to us about how New World Order fits in perfectly with my prophecies which are having a fulfillment before our very eyes. Welcome to the program, Barry. Thank you, Eric. This is not the first time that we've met, but there will be perhaps people watching the program who have never really seen you or heard about your uh, understandings of world events. And it's with that in mind that perhaps you could uh, just bring us up to date with, from your perspective on how the New World Order fits into what's happening today. I was a school teacher 15 years, Howard and I, one day I was travelling home with a friend. Um, he asked me a question about the common market, as he had been teaching this during his classes, and I, I said, I don't know much about it. He said, is it in the Bible prophecies? And I said, I don't know. So that started me off. I began to look into the scriptures. I found at a certain time in history, there would be 10 nations would come together and control the economy of the world. Um, I learned that there would be a great world leader arise called Antichrist. I learned that there would be a one world money system called the Mark of the Beast. That's how I got started. Um, and then in the year 1990, George Bush uttered a very strange phrase. Do you remember the New World Order? Just as he introduced the Gulf War, he kept using this phrase, New World Order. And flying out of, um, one day I was flying out of San Diego for Texas, I picked up a copy of the LA Times and in there it said George Bush and his New World Order. People do not really understand what it is. And as they went round asking his staff what is the meaning of the New World Order, none of them knew. They said the President keeps using the phrase but we're not sure if what it is is what we think it is or what the President thinks it is. Now we happen to know what it is now. It is a satanic Luciferian plan for the takeover of the whole world and its population and they want to bring it to some sort of completion by, by the end of this year and that's why it's called by George Bush New World Order and Jimmy Carter before him Global 2000 in other words at the end of this millennium which is this year the new millennium starts of course on the 1st of January 2001 according to the Royal Observatory up the Thames, uh, up the River Thames at Greenwich you talk about the New World Order um defined as you have as being luciferian yes um, how do we how do you know that well my investigations led me to look at the back of the american dollar and i found these strange seals on the dollar here when we go to the states speaking on these subjects i, I say to the americans have you seen these seals before they say no i say but they've been on your dollar since 1933 how come you've never seen them? They're Illuminati seals, which was a secret society set up in 1776 by a man called Adam Weishaupt, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, Weishaupt was an ex-Jesuit priest who had an aim, it was to put Lucifer on the throne of the world. And on the back of the dollar here, you see the seal on the left-hand side, and there's an eye in the triangle, which many Americans presume to be the eye of God, but it's not, it's the eye of Horus, in Egyptian mythology, now called the Eye of Lucifer, or Satan. Now we can establish that fact because the God that we serve does not have one eye, of course, he's not a cyclops. It says the eyes, plural, of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. Anybody who is familiar with um, witchcraft will know that that eye, uh, when you open it a little bit, is the eye of psychic knowledge. When you open it completely and it is illumined, as this one is, it is the eye of Lucifer himself, who is the god of Freemasonry, the god of witchcraft, and the god of the occult, or esoteric practice. Then you have the 13 layers of stone on the pyramid, and people should be asking the question, what is an Egyptian pyramid doing on the back of an American dollar? What link-up is there between America and Egypt? The answer is none at all, except in the field of the occult. And I discovered that the 13 layers of stone there stand for the 
13 layers in Freemasonry, which is very much involved in this plan to set up the Novus Ordo Seclorum, which is a one world government. Then you have at the bottom 1776, the date was uh, May the 1st, when the Illuminati was inaugurated in Bavaria, not July the 4th, the Declaration of Independence, as many Americans presume. The two words at the top, Annua Chapters, stand for announcing the birth of, and down the bottom, Novus Ordo Seclorum. The word Novus in Latin stands for New. The word Ordo means order, and the word seclorum is where we get our word secular from, the absence of God. And thus we see that eye cannot be the eye of God, for why would he be setting up a, 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 a new system, complete world government, in the, with the absence of himself as being in power? And thus we see we're dealing with a Luciferian plan. On the other side, we have the so-called American Eagle, which we discover is not an eagle at all. According to the witchcraft people, that is a phoenix. And the phoenix, as we all know, was a mystical bird that rose out of the ashes of the Tower of Babel. Man's first attempt, Tower of Babel. God smashed it, failed. Second attempt, new world order. I predict God will smash it, but it will reign for three and a half years and the whole world system will come under its power. It's starting right now, Howard. People may also be thinking, well, does it really matter that these are on the back of an American dollar or any other currency for that matter? What is the significance? I wouldn't have known the answer to that question had I not had meetings in Seattle, Washington. One afternoon I was walking into a building and a girl came in carrying a large volume called The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manley Hall, a top Freemason writer. And when I saw the book, I got excited. I said, how much for your book, dear? She said, $20. So I paid her 20 American and I got the book. I trust she bought another one. When I took that book home, I discovered much of the answers to my problems. Um, for example, he said there in that book that when America was settled, it was settled by two groups of people, the Pilgrim Fathers, and that's why we read here, in God we trust, they settled America for religious freedom. He said at the same time, a group of occultists and Freemasons settled it for a peculiar and a particular purpose known only to the initiated few. The initiated few are called in Freemasonry in the top degrees, the adepts, the elect and the sages. These men settled it for the main purpose of putting Lucifer, the god of Freemasonry, on the throne of the world. And it is significant that next month, in the month of uh, well, November, Whenever this program comes out on television, people need to recognize the American elections this time are very important indeed, as either uh, Gore or Bush will lead the world into this peculiar and particular purpose for which America was set up, which is to lead the whole world system into a one world government, a one world religion, a one world law system, and a one world money system that the Bible calls the mark of the beast. I would think that if the free, any Freemason is watching, they would be very upset about what you're saying. Um, how can you be sure that Freemasons are at the bottom of this? The United States of America is the only country in the world, uh, the only republic in the world that is completely controlled by Freemasonry. Uh, a careful reading of my books will show you that the uh, map of Washington, D.C has the Freemason symbols built into the streets. Have you ever seen that? I did it last time I was here in England. And anybody who would like to argue the toss about that should go to the library and get a picture of Washington DC, a map, and check out, you'll see the compass built into the streets. One end of the compass finishes at the Jefferson Memorial. The other end finishes at the White House. They will see the square intersecting it further up on the map of Washington. And then they will see the satanic pentagram built into the streets of Washington, D.C. also. And if you look at it carefully, you'll see the two horns go uppermost, the two ears outwards, and the beard of the goat, which fits into the pentagram, the five-pointed star. Anybody into witchcraft knows this. The beard stops right at the White House again. So the presidency of America is affected by witchcraft from two different directions, the point of the end of the compass and also the point of the beard of the goat. Those that are into witchcraft say we recognize this, but for the majority of the people out there, they're not into witchcraft, so they're probably still not seeing the significance of this. And if they are, they, they will be better at having an understanding if they could look at a reference book that was independent. Are there such 
there is, there, yes, do people just need to get onto the net and they'll discover the answers to these questions. People today, of course, are very fortunate they can check all this information out. We had a man in New Zealand who listened to what I said once and uh, as an accountant he felt he had a responsible position. He said, this man is talking absolute nonsense. He got so angry about it, went home, began to look it up and discovered it was all happening. In other words, what I'm saying here is that people into Freemasonry shouldn't be angry, they should be very grateful that I'm telling them they're into a witchcraft system. Any man who joins, of course, knows you do the cutting of the throat, symbolically speaking, the ripping of the chest, the pulling out of the heart, the cutting of the stomach, the pulling out of the bowels, the falling into the coffin, carried around the lodge in a coffin painted on the sheet, a miraculous resurrection, death blows to, uh, to the head are counteracted by a resurrection akin to the resurrection of Jesus, and the kissing of the Bible, sealing each, each oath uh, on a witchcraft uh, system, it's, it's evil. And therefore, men uh, all over the world are grateful when I explain to them the esoteric or witchcraft nature of Freemasonry. Most of them see it as a benevolent society that helps build hospitals, old people's homes and so on. But that's simply the outer portico. As a Christian man and a speaker worldwide, I need to tell people there is an inner area that they know nothing about. And as a Christian, I must warn them, it is deadly, very deadly indeed, regarding the salvation of one's soul to belong to a system like that, that proclaims in the upper degrees, Lucifer is God. The average Freemason wouldn't know that. He would say that, he would deny that, that Lucifer is the head of that organization. Yes, um, we discovered that uh, Freemasonry is a, a system which believes in a dual God, dualistic system. Uh, dualism means that in Eastern philosophy and religion, they believe you have to have an opposite for everything. For example, if you have black, you have white. If you have light, you must have darkness. If you have a male, you must have a female. If you're a Chinese, you have a yin, you must have a yang. In the case of God, they come up against a brick wall because God does not have an opposite. So they invent an opposite, they call him Lucifer. And the statement made by Albert Pike many years ago, a top Freemason in America, said these words, what we must say to the crowd is, we worship a God, but it is the God which one adores without superstition. To you sovereign grand inspectors general, we say this, and you may repeat it to the brethren of the 30th, 31st and 32nd degrees. The Masonic religion should be by all of us initiates maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. If Lucifer were not God, would the God of the Christians bother to spread false and harmful statements about him? Yes, Lucifer is God. But then he goes on to say, Adonai is also God, unfortunately. And then he said, there must be two gods to bring about perfection, you see. And then they change the roles of these gods. They say, Adonai is the dark side of God, and Lucifer is the God of light and brightness. In other words, they blaspheme, as they call the God of Israel the dark side, and Lucifer, their God, the bright side of the Godhead. Uh, men are not told this until they get into the upper degrees, you see, above the 30th degree. How many other degrees are there before then, before one is brought uh, into the knowledge of who is in control of that? Well, a, a man should smell a rat by the first degree as soon as he does the, uh, the hood over the, over the eyes called hoodwinking, uh, a noose around his neck. Any Freemason watching this program knows I'm telling the truth. I've, I've met so many of them. In fact, I've sat there with them, with their wives sitting next to them, and their wives saying, you didn't. The poor man doesn't know what to do. He said, I did, dear. There's a noose around their neck. Their shirt is rolled up uh, above the chest. They're pricked with the point of a sword. And they're told that if they run forward, they'll be hung, they'll be stabbed by the sword. If they run backwards, they'll be hung by the running noose. And while they're in that dreadful position, they do these witchcraft, symbolic cutting of the throat and so on. So any man who does that is in his right mind should say there's something wrong here. They should smell a rat. And of course, it is witchcraft from start to finish. How are they going to be used to bring about this new world order then? Well, the, the point is that Washington DC, with the Masonic symbols built into the streets, uh, has a very powerful witchcraft spirit over it. Now, anybody listening to what I'm saying today who doesn't believe in spiritual matters, of course, wouldn't understand. It says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. Is there some sort of conspiracy then uh, between certain world leaders that will bring about this new world order? There is a power group at the top, obviously, who are running the whole thing, pulling the strings. And I have discovered, for example, that um, 
Uh, Mr Tony Blair is not running this country. I learned that he is controlled by a group called The City. Um, right in the middle of London you have a group here which, which control the politics of this country. And if the Queen, for example, wishes to go in there, she must receive permission from the Lord Mayor, who will then give her permission to go into the city. It's like an entity on its own. Um, they go along with a group called the Adam Smith Institute. They work with another group called the Mont Pelerin Society. They send the message out on um, restructuring the whole world system ready for this world government to the politicians of the day, Tony Blair, uh, Helen Clark in New Zealand, and Mr Howard in Australia. These people listen to the Mont Pelerin Society, use the policies of the Adam Smith Institute, which mean that you privatise, you, you sell up your assets overseas, it leaves your government vulnerable, they have no power left because they have no assets, and then at that point these overseas people who bought the assets control the whole world system and set up a global village. In the year 1961, the International Monetary Fund came to New Zealand. Um, and this is how the whole plan was initiated. They were involved in this plan and the plan was to lend every country money and then make those politicians of the day sign conditions which would later be fulfilled. So in 1961 they came to New Zealand, our Prime Minister was Mr Keith Holyoke. Our government borrowed a lot of money from the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and signed the conditions. Then the IMF uh, and, uh, people went away again with their empty suitcases, left it at that, and uh, let us go ahead with our plans to uh, develop our country and so on using this money which we had borrowed. Now, little did the people know that when those politicians passed on, someone else took the job. The next group of politicians to come in were left with the terrible job of fulfilling the conditions. It happened about 22 years later, I think it was, in 19, uh, uh, seven, sorry, 1987, that's the year, we had, we had five politicians in New Zealand worked in with the Mont Pelerin Society to bring about these conditions in the country. Now, let me read a scripture, Proverbs 22, 7. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. That's a powerful verse. In other words, we became the lender, the borrower, the IMF was the lender, and we had to do what they told us to do. We, we've heard these words come up day by day. Restructuring was the first word. Didn't know what it meant, but we learned later it meant sacking thousands of government workers. The next word was corporatization. Turn your government departments into corporations. Next word to come up, was privatisation, means privatise those corporations, get big business involved in ex-government department. Selling off. Selling off. Next word was shares at 49% overseas, keeping 51% majority shareholding in the country. We felt secure. I was in Sri Lanka last year, they told me that was called peopleisation. Every country's got their own little catchword, you see. Peopleisation makes the local people feel secure in that they have 51%. Very cleverly, a little stock market crash in New York, which lasts for 24 hours, frightens the peopleisation people. They sell their shares to the other guys, and the other guy's shareholding goes up to over 51%. At that point, what was owned by your country, paid for with your father's tax money, your grandfather's tax money, now goes into overseas hands, never to return again. So the key word, when you see privatisation, you add another word to it, and the word is goodbye, and the other word is forever. You will never see it again. Then they bring investors in, of course, because you've lost your assets and you've paid off the IMF with the money you've made, you've got nothing left, no assets and no money. Investors come in and buy up the rest of your country. This is uh, globalization, to set up a global village. Now, if you look on the back of the dollar, you see that the words there, Novus Ordo Seclorum, mean a secular, heathenistic, new world order, which is a good government and so on. Now, in the case of this new world order, they use the analogy of the building of a house. Now, when you build a house, you have a foundation, and if anybody who is watching this program has a pen and paper, I suggest you get it out and write down what I'm saying now. 1776 was the foundation of the whole deal. The Luciferian plan was devised by one, Adam Weishaupt, we've dealt with him in Bavaria. Those seals were designed by his designers, carried across the Atlantic in the year 1778, handed to Thomas Jefferson, a very powerful politician in America, who received the two seals from a hooded messenger who carried the seals in a velvet bag. 
He never discovered who that man was. The only seal that has been used up to this point in history was the so-called eagle. But the other one was hidden until 1933, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt had that put on the back of the American dollar. Now we have two seals. Anybody who's interested to do this, photograph these seals, put them on a transparency, cut the transparency in half, lay one on half of the other, on, on top of the other, and discover that these seals are full of Masonic and witchcraft symbolism. So the foundation of the house was 1776, May the 1st. When you build a house, you then put up the framework that was 1987 in New Zealand under the Labour government. Five men brought the plan to pass without even telling the rest of the Labour Party what they were doing. They tried it first of all with Margaret Thatcher here in Great Britain. She didn't get very far with it. The people didn't like it. So she was finally sacked from the job. She went. They then moved to New Zealand because we're a very slack little country. The motto in New Zealand, she'll be right. The Australian motto, very similar, she'll be right, mate, you see. So they did that to us. Now, when you put the framework of the house up, who comes next? Answer the electrician. And then, of course, at the end of 1999, the Y2K bug came upon us. Everybody was terrified. And a man called John Koskinen in America controlled 25 groups for fixing the Y2K problem. These 25 groups worldwide were the electrician, that were going to be used to set up the electricity for the new world order as they wired this house. Now this is what he did very cleverly. He, um, through fear, let it be known that there was a terrible problem, which was true. It cost them 650 billion American dollars to fix the problem. The problems are outlined in my books there. We all thought the whole world was going down. Howard, did you think that here? Well, well, I personally didn't because I know the prophecies in the Bible, and, okay. uh, but um, many, many people did. They were extremely concerned because they started to stockpile food and, uh, you know, take other precautions. They did. Ready for some sort of crash. Once the framework of the house is up, the next thing to do is to bring in the electrician to wire the house. The Y2K bug, so-called, or the Millennium bug, was the wiring of the New World Order house. Um, at the end of 1999, on December the 31st, you remember at midnight, the changeover came. We had zero, zero on many of the world's computers. Now, through fear, the governments of the world were forced to upgrade their computers, whether they could afford to do it or not. Very poor countries in Africa, South America, and so on, all went along with the plan. And when they upgraded their computers through fear, Although it cost the world government people $650 billion to do this, along with the people who were working with them, John Koskinen, the man in charge, was in, made sure that everybody had things compatible, ready for the new world order and the new money system. Let me read from this article given to us from a friend in Ireland. It's called Moving the World Electronically into World Government. comes out from Southwest Radio Ministries, Prophetic Observer, and the article is written by Joan Vion. I quote in part, Y2K was the wiring of the house, as the structure had already been built for some time. Y2K provided the excuse to transfer the world from individual nation states into an electronically knit world, a world which is now one and includes both governments and corporations. From the beginning of January the 1st, 2000, we entered an electronic world government. Now, Howard, Here's the shocking statement. I turn the page and I've underlined this in red. Koskakin boasted further, as reported in USA Today, solving Y2K proved that I can run the world with four people. There it is. All they need now is the roof on the house and that is the worldwide money crash which is to come shortly. Did he have access through what he did then to the computers, to everyone's computers now? Yes, the whole thing now is linked electronically.